Hi, Mandra Armstrong, and welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. Today we're having a look at this. It is a teeny tiny wireless camera. Look at that, not much bigger than your little finger there. And you can see it has an antenna on it, which is about the right length for 2.4 gigahertz. You kind of get used to the length of these things. If you look inside your old wireless gear, that would be the kind of length of the antenna. And it's very simple. You just have a power hookup, which I'm not quite sure what voltage is, so we'll have to experiment with that, and a button, which I presume is some sort of transmitter frequency button. And I'm sure you're curious as to what you would receive that on, what the receiver looks like. Well, if you go and have a look on the drone websites, you get things like this. So this is an Ichin uh, headset unit, and it's for receiving that camera, which I presume you put on a little drone. Maybe that'll literally work on anything when I mean, it's so light, so tiny. And you actually have a couple of uh, screens in here, just as you would imagine, um, like some sort of VR goggles, but it's definitely not in stereo. And crudely enough, there's this battery pack on the side, which may or may not have any charge. I'm not seeing any LEDs light up when I push this button, so we might have to figure that bit out. Um, but that just plugs into the side and provides power. It doesn't have an integrated battery. And there is another one. I mean, I picked these up, by the way, from CPC some years back, and they were like pennies, literally a few pounds each, this gear. So it's not very expensive equipment at all. And there's another headset here I'll show you. It's come in a bag. So this one, look, com comes with a smart USB rechargeable battery. And again, I think this was £15. But look what you get for the money. Doesn't that look groovy? So you've got this headset, which is one big screen, and it's got an antenna here that will receive that and just the buttons to set it. And a very similar battery setup. So I'm probably not going to bother playing with this one. We've already got one open. But as an aside, you might like this. If you can pick them up for literally £10, it's quite a good source for a composite screen. So if you pop these open, you'll generally find a screen about the same size here sitting in the end that you can use in your projects. And that'll be, be plain composite input. And you'll actually have some menu controls, you know, to be able to adjust the brightness or things like that. And very simple power. So could be useful for projects. Hoping this will power on. I'm not quite sure where the charger is for it. So I'm gonna just plop it in. Have a little look-see here. Get me old head in there. Yeah, as expected, absolutely nothing. Oh no, there is none off. Please have some power. Please have some power. Nada, not one bit. Interesting, this LiPo battery does have a mini USB charge port, so at least I can get some juice on it without having to find some crazy adapter. I'm not quite sure about this, if this is an output, probably provided for some other kind of headset that might use it. Anyway, I digest. As that's going to take some time to charge up, we might as well get the other headset out. You never know, there might be some juice in the battery. I don't know if they're interchangeable, actually. Let's have a quick check. This battery is 4.7 volts, 1,000 milliamp hours. And this one is 1,600 milliamp hours with 3.7 volts. So definitely a very different voltage. Fortunately, both, though, are chargeable via the USB micro, and it does come with a lead, so that's not too bad. So at least we'll get them on the go. But I think first, I'll just plug it into this, just to check. There might be a touch of juice in it, who knows? So plugging that in there. There's no on-off switch, I think, on this, so that's... Oh, there is juice, because look, the screen is operating. Fantastic, and in fact, it's giving me two out of four bars of charge. What I'll do is attach the antenna right here. We need to find a way to power up. Oh, that's not great though, is it? Have a look at this. That's that great old build quality. <laughs> so if you're planning on attaching the antenna, you might want to tighten that nut up. Otherwise, oh, it's just loosening itself. I think that's, that's good enough. We'll leave it like that for now. Now what we're going to need to do is power the camera. I have no idea what voltage it is, so I'm going to hook it up to a bench power supply, which are yeah, these two wires here, which I'm just going to check before turning them on. It's currently on 7 volts. I'm going to knock it right down to 2.9, and we're going to use the old soldering iron to solder directly to the camera. Right, so there's the camera hooked up at 2 volts. I'm going to plug our battery into this thing. 
put the lens cap away. So we can see here it says channel two and there's a lot of nothing going on. Now I'm gonna turn on the bench power supply. Oh, something's happened. Oh, yep, 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 yeah, yeah, look. So that's at 2.9 volts at 310 milliamps. I might just turn it up a little bit. Let's give it a 3.2, there we go. And look, you can see now, if I hold this, you can see a kind of Doctor Who effect where it's a camera in a camera, an infinity camera. Hi, this is fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to hold this up to my face so I can describe to you what I'm seeing. Yeah, it's very usable. Actually, it's alarmingly usable. If you want to spy on something, I'm looking at myself now, that's freaking me out, right? But yeah, I don't know how you would look at yourself. It's probably something like this sort of setup when you're looking at the camera. It's surprisingly good. So considering this whole thing is costing you um, probably under 20 pounds for the camera and the headset, it's absolutely fantastic. So again, 3.2 volts for this. You could check with the manufacturers of whatever camera you use. But let's have a little look, see much closer at this thing. What we can see, you've got your crystal there, looks like a transistor, but possibly power supply. Again, another control chip, uh, an inductor, and it's actually a dual layer board. So I think what you have is two things going on here. I think you've basically got the camera here and the circuitry in this board is probably deriving a you know, composite signal or whatever the camera is going to be transmitting. I'm pretty sure this is transmitting an analog uh, signal. And then here on the back, you do have some sort of encoder that's taking that feed from the camera and then blasting it off. But what you have also here, which is crazy, and I do remember reading the instruction list. Fortunately, it's set to a channel that they're both working on. But this button here actually changes the channel. And you can see here a whole array of LEDs. And that, it, they are absolutely tiny. Look at the head of the screwdriver there. It's taking up three. So it's on this particular channel, which I think looking at this thing, it has an OSD, it's saying it was channel two. So I'm just gonna have a little play there. What do these buttons mean on here? And let's zoom back out. Got a lot of reflections, I do apologize. <laughs> but I'm pushing some buttons here. So you've got a brightness button. You can adjust that back and forwards, okay. How do we get out of that? And then it says the language is English. The mode is 16 by nine, reset. Not too many things to worry about. Now I'm gonna go back out of the menu and then I'm gonna push some of the other buttons. Oh, so that's clearly the channel select button. Um, yeah, and as I'm pushing that actually in the top left corner, so it's not 2.4 gigahertz, 5.8 gigahertz, but I can see here it says channel two, 5.705, and then I'm pressing 5.685, 5.665, so you're going up through these channels, come on, and it says A4, B4, C4, let's see what our camera is on, D4, E4, we're back to the A's, hmm, getting a bit worrying now that we can't, oh, I see, okay, so you've got A, B, C, and then 1 to 8 on each channel, that's complicated, okay, so I think A1 is what we were set to, yeah, oh, go back again, F, A, and I'm just going to double check that up to my head, yeah, that is, it's crazy good, I, I really wish I could show you what it looks like um, with any degree of accuracy, but well, I think if you were like driving a, a drone or something like that, that would probably be, well, just good enough for you. You know, we're not seeing any interference, so we're not really sure on the range. Again, just for general spying on people, you can't really go wrong. There's no sound as far as I know. In fact, there's no speakers or anything on this device. And um, why would you? Because all you'll be hearing is So there you have it. I've just realized something as well. Because the transmitter is purely a transmitter, rather than a transmitter and receiver, you can transmit to multiple of these at any one time. And another thing I noticed is this one does have stereo antennas, whereas that one only has a mono, a single antenna. So again, not quite sure what that gets you. But yeah, if you've got any experience of these, yeah, please comment down below. I'm very curious, uh, really, about how they all work. And this one's even more weird because it has the USB micro on the side, but it also has what appear to be a couple of antenna slots too. I mean, like, you know, DC headphone style jacks. So, yeah, very curious indeed. Thanks for watching. <laughs>